We've had some really amazing snorkeling here um, on the outer reef, but we're about to just pick our way through a passage through the outer um, and head out to Ashmore Reef out in the Coral Sea. A similar sort of species, maybe a few dog-tooth tuna, maybe some bigger sharks, um, but I'm hoping for some clearer water because we're being affected by, um, I guess, the runoff all through the TI Islands and also New Guinea's not that far away, so the Fly River will be pumping in a bit of sediment. But we're going through a passage through the outer reef to get to the outside at the moment. There's no wind, so we're motoring out. That's a mixed blessing. Like, it makes it really safe to get out through here, but um, I don't know. We might get a spinnaker run out to Ashmore. It's 20 miles. But we're riding the ebb tide out. So it floods in and ebbs out, which is no big surprise. You can see there, pretty obvious current line against the reef. So it's not really a super challenging navigation in these conditions. Well, there we go. We can look at the sounder. There's 200 metres of water under us. So we're safe. We're just having a little holiday after dodging all those uh, coral bombies and everything for the last few days. A lot of people think ocean travel is um, you know, dangerous or whatever. Nothing could be further from the truth. It's a, it's a lot safer in some respects than coastal travel. I guess the only thing is if we do get into trouble that we can't handle ourselves, um, help is a, is a long way coming. But we're in Australian waters. Yeah, it will come. If we pop that eperb, they'd come, but that is totally a last resort. But anyway, we're just going to enjoy not having to worry about anything for a little while, I think. Blue water. Well, we'll worry about that there's no wind. Where's the wind? Put the anchor down at Ashmore Reef yesterday afternoon. We got just in just in time to find a safe spot to anchor. And we're, before we hop in for a snorkel, we wanted to show you all a little bit where we were on the charts. Over to you, Troy. All right, well, let's have a look. So here we are, right here at Ashmore, right there. Okay. So there's the barrier reef. That's where we came out nearly 35 nautical miles. Thursday Island, well we actually came we actually came up via here, didn't we? And mm. then down. But as the crow flies, TI, where we were anchored, is about 137 nautical miles. <laughs> All right. The closest point of Australia, about 114. And the closest part of New Guinea is Around about 95. So we're closer to New Guinea. We're right here in the in the Gulf of Papua, actually. If you look, there's the Gulf of Papua. There's the Fly River. Here's the tip of Australia. We are out there. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're looking at with Ashmore Reef, you can see that we've got an old crater, I guess is what it is. And it's very deep. It's 50 metres all through the middle of it. And all around the outside, if you can see those soundings, they are in the one kilometer range <laughs> right. so just off the edge we're here i'll just put the cursor exactly where we are at the moment we are there so if we just went out here there's the 15 meter bit that we want to go and see tomorrow in the dinghy and then it's boop you're off in a thousand meters of water and that's why it's so beautiful so clear it's just wonderful so we're, we're just um, going to snorkel in along here. And if the weather's going to continue nicely, look, we can go up here where it's quite shallow and then it drops off very quickly into 480 metres along this wall. And I think that that's definitely something we should go and look at.
All right, Pascal, we've got our weather report. So this is for tomorrow. We've got the high pressure system down here. Um, so air is gonna circulate over this way. There's a trough here, it's dissipated. What does all that mean? Stop rambling, Troy. It means that us out here is going to have very, very settled conditions. Yeah, it looks like we're gonna have two great days of uh, snorkeling. We can explore in the dinghy. It'll be really, really safe. We can go and try and find some reef sharks to swim with. Um, have we got that stuff to go for a fish feed, Pasky? Yeah, it's in the fridge. We've got the fish scraps and the squid scraps. So yep. we're going to go feed the locals um, and hopefully get some really great footage for you guys. What do we got? We got some minced up mackerel. Ooh, yep. And some squidly bits. Some squid bits. Yeah. All right. So, yep, from processing the fish, we've saved a little bit. If you are ever going to be feeding fish, um, it doesn't want to be a consistent effort in one place because the fish get used to it and they can get aggressive and, and used to you. But this is just plain uncooked fish. So if you are going to feed fish anything, that's what it should be because that's what they'd normally have. I've seen fish being fed bread. Um, that can be a problem, all right, because the yeasts and things like that in bread can actually cause fungal infections in the mouth and gills of fish. So if you're going to feed them anything, feed them what they're used to. All right, don't cook it. Nice and raw, just the scraps from your cleaning. They'd be eating it anyway, because we'd be cleaning fish here. We're just gonna <laughs> give it to them and watch the, watch the antics. So for this dive plan, we'll just go up this cut and we'll just go out up in the waves and muck around. Then when we come back, we can anchor the main boat up in that blue hole. Mm -hmm. All right, and from there, We'll, go, we'll at least go and have a look because we know this anchorage is good. We've got it on the GPS and we can just we can come back if it doesn't work out and we'll be safe. Yeah. But we'll go and we'll go and check that out because it looks like there's a nice cut in there and it looks like it's a big broad anchorage with a nice wall behind it mm -hmm. so that we can go for a swim this afternoon or this evening, you know, just as the sun's going down, go and check it out.
All right, so we've dropped anchor in one of the passes where the water comes into Ashmore Reef. The waves bunch up up there, water all rushes in through a gap um, and comes into the inner lagoon. That's going to be fishy. All right, there's a lot of current at the moment. We can't jump in. If we do right now, we'll be swept off away from the boat. Probably have a pretty, pretty rough time of it, actually. But uh, in another two hours, it'll be slack tide and we'll jump in. And you watch, there'll be just a ton of fish down there. Probably a shark or two. Um, I don't know if I was a shark, I'd sort of hang around and take advantage of it. But um, that's that's really what you're looking for. If you want the best diving and fishing, you want a bit of run. Okay, you want you want a bit of current because that is what fish like. Let's go see. Well, that's as good a demonstration as any that even with sharks around it's all about vibration rather than so much the smell of blood so that wasn't a perfect shot was it <laughs> the trout still had a little bit left in it but it swam under that rock and i gave it a bit of a jam with the spear and that uh, that pretty much finished it and i was able to get it out without those three reef sharks sort of piling in and coming and grabbing it from us so that's an important thing to remember with sharks in the water it's all about the vibration. Blood, blood can be a little problem, like they'll, they'll home in on it, but um, you really need that good shot and you don't want the fish struggling, or you're gonna end up with a fight on your hands.
If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button because it makes it more likely that YouTube will suggest our video to a broader audience. Also, we'd love to hear your feedback, so head over to the comments and drop us a line.